أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله All praise is due to Allah and may his peace and blessings be upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم I begin by greeting you all السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يقول ربنا جل وعلا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن علم القرآن خالق الإنسان علمه البيان Allah سبحانه وتعالى says الرحمن the most merciful علم القرآن taught the Quran خالق الإنسان he created man علمه البيان and taught man the art of expressing himself or herself so when we say that this is really about the art of communication I think that's very appropriate for us Muslims because this is really an art Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it along with the bounties of creation the name of Allah ar-Rahman and also along with the idea that this is part of learning and teaching the Quran and also part of it is teaching man how to express himself or herself as far as bayan is, is concerned and the way that the Quran sp speaks about um, communication is that it addresses both components of communication. What is said and how it is received. Because by the end of the day, communication is about expressing an idea, a thought or a feeling and sharing it and expressing it or delivering it to the other person. So the Quran speaks about both aspects. Some people say that communication is about speaking well. Some people say that communication is about listening well. And when we look into the Quranic approach to it, we will find that depending on what is happening, both are important. So I'll give you an example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that he took a covenant from Bani Israel. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ مِيثَاقَهُمْ وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ We took a covenant with the children of Israel. أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا اللَّهِ That you worship none but Allah. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا That you be dutiful to your parents. وَبِذِ الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ And that you be good to the orphans and to the needy and to those who are poor. And then at the very end of that covenant, Allah subhanahu wa ta that when you speak to people, you use husna. And husna in Arabi, af'al al-tafdeel. Sigha al-tafdeel, tagul ahsan, idha kan mudhakkar, utgul husna, idha kan mu'annath. Idgul kabir wa akbar, utgul kabira wa kubra. Wa qulu lil-nasi husna. It's a superlative form. It's what we call it an exaggerated form. Say big and bigger in Arabi, one of the forms is that when you speak to people, you speak that which is best. Command, Rabbuna subhanahu wa ta'ala yaqul, وَقُلْ لِعِبَادِي يَقُولُ الَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ And tell my servants to say that which is best. Not just say that which is good, rather say that which is best. وَقُلْ لِعِبَادِي يَقُولُ الَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us also the example أَلَمْ تَرَ كَيْفَ ضَرَابَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا كَلِمَةً طَيِّبَةً كَشَجَرَةٍ طَيِّبَةً أَصْلُهَا ثَابِتْ وَفَرْعُهَا فِي السَّمَاءِ He said that, have you seen how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets the parable of a goodly word is like a goodly tree that is firmly established, rooted, and its branches reach up to the heavens. كَمَانْ رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ يَقُولُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى قُلْ إِلَيْهِ يَصْعَضُ الْكَلِمُ الطَّيِّبِ to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a sense, beautiful speech. And that is why sometimes, unfortunately, we're not very careful with what we say. Sometimes we're not careful also with how we say it. We don't pick the best. And many times we have the ability to pick the worst. Because many of us, subhanAllah, can be very eloquent. If I'm expressing my anger, oh, I am never short of words. But if I'm expressing something else, like happiness, joy, usually we don't have enough vocabulary. If I want to tell you that I'm upset with you, man, I have a long list of dictionary. I, will I can never be quiet. I can just go on and on and on. Ask people to express appreciation. One time, Allah, I was in a um, counseling session. I was a husband and a wife, and they were not doing well, so I asked the husband. They were talking about their problems, and they would not stop. 
talking and talking and talking. And then all of a sudden, to change the topics, I said to the husband, do me a favor, what do you appreciate most about your wife? What do I appreciate most about my wife? Appreciate... Um, A-P-P-R-E-C, appreciate. And she's looking at him. Wallahi, I can tell you that so many minutes went by. And goes, Sheikh, that's a surprising question. I appreciate about my wife. Um, um, um. Um, I'm not, I'm, wallahi, I'm not making this up. Wallahi, I'm telling you, this is what goes on. And she's looking at him, now she starts crying. Okay? He's just waiting for him to say something, and he's really fighting to come up with something. And he finally tells me, um, she cooks good, she cooks good. Um, uh, cooks good. Um, then he said, um, she's beautiful. And the minute he said she's beautiful, she smacked him on the head. Just, you know. Um, but then again, when you really think about it, we only are able to express ourselves fully when we are angry. We can use profanity, we can start cussing, we can start cursing, we can start using all kinds of things. And we never come short. And if you speak Arabic, you know you never come short, by the way. Because, mashallah, there is a long list in Arabic. Okay? Oh, in Arabic, you never, go, you never go wrong. There is just so much within the culture, within the language. Okay? But then also, on the other hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites people to also open their ears. Do you know that, subhanallah, according to the Quran, when people are, wal-iyadu billah, are in the hellfire, when they're asked, what led you to the hellfire? You know what's the first thing that they say? We didn't listen. We didn't listen. Where does it say this in the Quran? Every time a group of them is thrown into the hellfire, the guards of the hellfire would ask them, did you not receive messengers who came to you from your Lord? to give you adequate warnings. And they said, yes, indeed. Warning and messengers came to us, فَكَذَّبْنَا But we attributed what they said to falsehood. Said, فَكَذَّبْنَا We rejected them. And you are in plain error, we said. And then they themselves, they say, وَقَالُوا لَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُ أَوْ نَعْقِلُ And then they say, only had we listened, or at least we used our reason, we wouldn't be of the people of the blazing fire. مَا كُنَّا فِي أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ Only if we were just listening. And then the Quran praises the believers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises the believers as being good listeners. فَبَشِّرْ عِبَادَ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقَوْلَ يَتَّبِعُونَ أَحْسَنَ Give glad tidings to my servants who listen to what is being said, and they follow the best of what is being said. You cannot really follow the best of what has been said if you have not been paying attention. Which one do you think is more difficult? Speaking well or listening well? Who of you would say that speaking well is really a challenge? Who would say that listening well is a challenge? You've been watching too much Dr. Phil, by the way. <laughs> if you think listening well is. They're actually both are difficult. And they both, because see, with listening, what is tested? Your patience is tested. I can't believe I have to listen to this rubbish again. Astaghfirullah al-Azim. 
you know, and here you are trying, pretending to be listening, and you just can't wait for that person to just shush, because you know what, I've heard it a bazillion times, so your patience is really tested. And what happens when we are listening to something that we don't like? We check out. We check out. We don't like it, so we just go to Disneyland, you know? We go to some happy place because we don't like what is being said. But subhanAllah, they say that your patience is really tested when you have to listen to something that you don't like. My favorite story is this. They say that the people of Mecca, this is in Sahih Muslim, say that the people of Mecca were having such a hard time with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Because the man is just changing anything about that society and he's just critical of what is happening in that society. And he's talking to people about foreign concepts. You need to free the slaves. You need to be nice to women, you need to be good to the poor, you need to be... And the people of Mecca just don't like that. So one time, a man by the name of a Tha'alibi comes to visit Mecca. And this Tha'alibi guy was very popular for exorcism, meaning that he can take jinn out of people. You'll believe that jinn can come and get into you? Astaghfirullah al Okay? So, so what they do is that you know, they, they believe that somebody is possessed by the jinn, maskoon. So they said, we got it. Muhammad Wasallam is actually possessed by the jinn. And what we need to do is we need to get this doctor to come and see him. So they go to Tha'alibi and they speak to him. You are so famous. You are so popular. You're so good at this. We have this man, poor man. He was such a nice man prior to the jinn coming to him. He was the best amongst us. But now he is just terrible. So the man is all pumped up and he said, you know what, I've dealt with so many jinn, I'm very sure that I can take care of this jinn as well. Where is he at? They said, ha huwa and al bayt. He is there by the Kaaba. And he's doing all these strange movements. So he goes and he sits next to the Prophet ﷺ as he was praying. And he said that the Prophet ﷺ finished the salah and he said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. He said, and I looked at his face. And he said, Wallahi ma ra'aytu awda'a wa la awsama min Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, I was taken back by the radiancy, radiant face, beautiful face of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he said, I approached him and I came close to him and I said, Yabna akhi. He said, my nephew, listen to this. Because see, sometimes you just tell people, Yabni, even though they're not your children. And you say, Alhamdulillah, you're not my child. Okay. But you just address them and say, Yabni, you know, my son, my daughter. Because you're just trying to get closer to them. So he goes to him and he said, Yabna Akhi. He said, oh, my nephew. He said, do you know who I am? He said, I am the famous Fa'alibi. I've dealt with so many jinn before. And I've taken so many of them out. And I'm very sure that if you give me a chance, I can also help you. Now listen to this. This is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa What is he being accused of? That he is possessed by the jinn. Now what would happen if somebody suggests this, this to us? And I would say, hey, 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 stop, stop right there, stop. Hold it, hold it, hold it. And then you would stop them, right? You need to put them in their place, you would say. But not Muhammad Wasallam. So he said, عندك, Have you said everything that you wanted to say? And they said that the people of Mecca are watching and they're really excited. They're getting somewhere. They're talking. You know, this is good, they said. So... And the man said, Anhaytuma, and he said, I am done. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at the man and he said, Inna alhamdulillah. All praise is due to Allah. Nahmaduhu. We praise him. Wa nasta'inuhu. We seek his help. Wa nasta'afiruhu. And we seek his forgiveness. Wa nasta'adih. And we seek guidance from him. Man yahdihi allahu fala mudillala. Whomever Allah wills to be guided, there will be none to misguide him. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to be misguided, none can offer them guidance. And then he says, And we seek refuge in Allah from the potential evil within us and from the evil of our bad deeds. Amma ba'd. Do you understand what it means by the way in Arabic? When one says, Amma ba'd. What does that mean? Amma ba'd. Amma ba'd. Amma ba'd ish. Amma ba'd. After what? That means. After what has been said. 
So amma ba'd in, in English would be translated into and to proceed. Meaning that this was my introduction and now I am to proceed. So he said to the man, amma ba'd. Hasant. Yeah. He said, amma ba'd. And the man looks, he says, la wallahi amma ba'd. The man looks at the Prophet ﷺ and said, By Allah, you're not proceeding. A'id alayya ma qult. He said, say it one more time. So it was so beautiful, he said, say it one more time. Because I have never heard Allah being praised in such a way. He said, la wallahi amma ba'd. A'id ma qult. He said, I want you to say it one more time. And the people of Mecca are looking into this and they're saying, they're getting somewhere. And then the man gets up, takes his shahada, and kisses the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the head, and the people of Mecca are saying now, "Oh my God, the jinns are really strong. Even this guy cannot take them out." But the point here is that we really had a real bayan that was taking place. It was a real bayan that was taking that was taking place. You know, one need that we humans have is what, like a need that we humans have. We need to eat. We need to drink, we need to breathe, but also what other kind of needs do we have? We need to socialize. Yeah, we need to express ourselves. Brothers have no need. I already said what they need. We need to eat and we need to drink. That's all we need. We need to be loved. We need to be sheltered. We need to rest. MashaAllah. Very good. <laughs> Typical. Yeah. We need to be left alone. <laughs> huh? We need. We need to be recognized. We need a relationship with God. We need to be heard. We need to be respected. I'm not sure if these are needs or complaints now, because it's coming out. I'm saying, I'm missing that. I want some of this. In the hopes that my husband or my wife is listening. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They say that actually one of the human needs that we have is that we need to be understood. We need to be understood. And if you listen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Musa alayhi salam, said, Musa, I want you to go and confront the Pharaoh. It's a very big, huge task. I want you to go to the Pharaoh. And what does Musa alayhi salam say? Musa alayhi salam immediately asks for six things. Qala rabbi shrah li sadri. He said, oh Allah, expand my chest for me. Shrah li sadri, why? No, shrah li sadri, why do we want our heart to be? Be patient. No, be patient. Okay, we want to be patient. Qala rabbi shrah li sadri, shrah. In Arabic, shrah means to expand and to make vast my chest. Rabbi shrah li sadri. Wa yassir li amri. And ease this task of mine. And oh Allah, relieve me of the speech impediment that it might hold my tongue. And then he explains and he says, So that I may be understood. So that I may be understood. That Musa alayhi salam is saying that, oh Allah, I really want to be understood. Now, it's not enough that, you know how sometimes people say, you want to talk? Fadl, talk. Talk. And we're just there, and they let the other person do the talk and say, Are you done now? Are you happy? Are you happy? Khalas? No? Can we move now? Because they think that when you allow a person to talk, they think that it is about allocating time for them. But what we miss out sometimes, it's not just you giving me the time, but also you granting me what would happen after the dialogue has taken place and that is the idea of wanting to be understood so the quran puts the emphasis on saying and puts the emphasis on listening as well okay and then you've got i mean this in itself subhanallah you know that in 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 islamic um in in, in muslim theology we can go on and on about for example the virtues of silence. You know that silence is good? Wallahi, silence is good. They say that a man came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, Ya Rasulullah, ma ahabbu al-a'mali ilallah. He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, 
what is the most beloved deed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And said, فَسَكَتَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ Said the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم kept quiet. And he said that he kept quiet for a long time. As if the answer was in the silence of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. That's where the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would teach and he would say, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ let he whoever believes and she whoever believes in Allah and the day of judgment, man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al akhir, falyakul khayra. Let them speak that which is good aw, liyasmut. Or let them be quiet. You know when they say zip it? Zip it is actually a good thing to do. Zip it is really a good thing to do. And that's why Ibn Mas'ud you say, he used to say, Ma ra'ayta shay'an ahwaja ila tuli hapsim min al He said, I haven't seen a thing that truly needs to be captivated or imprisoned like the tongue. And you know that the tongue has to go through two gates before it actually comes out. It has to go through what? The tongue has to go through two gates. The teeth and the lips. So I said that there are the teeth holding it back and then there are, and now you're all trying it. So okay, fine. Take, take a minute. Take a minute to try it. You know, your tongue is actually behind your teeth and your lips. You know what? It's funny you said that. I've never noticed, subhanAllah. Because they say that it needs to be kept there. needs to keep, be kept shush. But sometimes we just let it out too soon. Even though. That. But see, the Quran does not praise silence simply because silence. Why is that? Because sometimes we understand silence to be what? The absence of noise. I mean, isn't that when we say, be silent, it means that it's an absence of noise? Well, that is silly. That is silly. If that's what silence means, it's just the absence of noise, then there is really no much point to that. You know that joke about the guy who loves being silent, and he bought a blank CD to listen to it? His cousin liked it so much and he said, can you please make me a copy of it as well? Okay? But, but that's why they say that silence is not just the absence of noise. That's not silence. That is not the type of silence that the Prophet ﷺ praises. Because in the other hadith he said, Awsani Rabbi bisittin. He said, my Lord has commanded me of six things. And then he said, Wa an yakuna samtiyam thikra. He said, أَنْ يَكُونَ نُطْقِيَ ذِكْرًا وَأَنْ يَكُونَ صَمْطِيَ فِكْرًا He said that my speech to be in remembrance of him and that my silence to be in reflection. Because sometimes silence can be very uncomfortable. Okay? Silence can be very uncomfortable if you're waiting in a court and the judge says, rise, sit down, and the judge is looking into his papers to see what's your sentencing. There is going to be a moment of silence there. But that's not a very comfortable silence. Teacher is waiting to give back the exams. And he's looking at the papers. There is a lot of silence there, but it's not comfortable. There is a lot of tension. A speaker who comes to give a lecture and he's not prepared and he forgets something. And he's trying to recall. That is silence. But it is not comfortable silence. So they're not saying that it's not just the praise of silence. They say that, subhanAllah, it is what happens during that silence that really matters. Am I, am I, being, uh, am I being clear? Okay. And that is why they used to say, Abu al-Ghazali, some people refer to this as a hadith, and some people say that it is a statement by, by, by Ghazali where he says, As-samtu hikmah wa qaleelun fa'iluh. He said that silence is a wisdom that practiced by very few people. Okay. How many times... Are we really able to hold ourselves back and restrain our tongue, even though we really want to say it, but somebody practiced that hikmah, practiced that silence. So in any case, so now, what do we do uh, as part of this? Also in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this communication. You know, take a guess as to how many qul there is in the Quran. Like, you know how I say, qul huwa Allahu ahad. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ قُلْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ قُلْ إِنَّكُمْ How many of them do we have, you think, in the Qur'an? 
Take a, take a number. How many quls do we have in the Quran? Approximately. Masha, who said 72? Wrong. Um, <laughs> I was waiting for that joke. Yeah. Say that there are over 275 quls in the Quran. Close to 300. Say. Say to them. Speak to them. Announce to them. Declare to them. So there is that idea of qul. Speak to them. But then also the Quran says how that happens. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا بِلِسَانِ قَوْمِهِ لِيُبَيِّنَ لَهُمْ And we have not sent a messenger except that the messenger spoke the tongue of the people in order to clarify for them. لِيُبَيِّنَ لَهُمْ And they say that spoke the language of the people, لِسَان in Arabi, does not only mean language. What else does لِسَان mean? Being aware of the culture of the people. Okay? Because sometimes a great, deal of, a great deal of communication, by the way, is cultural. You all know what I'm saying? A great deal of communication is cultural. How do Easterners communicate? People who come from the East. Pakistanis, Chinese, Vietnamese, everybody from the East. How do we communicate? People who are Arabs, part of Africa. How do people communicate in that part of the world? You beat around the bushes all day long. Okay? All day long, you're just going around and around. You never what? You never straight. How do people communicate here in the West? People are very straight. Okay? So you trying to communicate with a person who communicates in a straight way, and all you're doing is just zigzagging up and down and up and down, and it's not happening. It won't take place. So what we will try to do, inshallah, is to bring the art of communication as close as possible to us. Whom do we need to communicate with? Like the most important people around us to communicate with. Spouse? Somebody said, I don't want to talk to my wife. Um, okay. Whom do we need to communicate with? Family members. Be it in the form of spouse, parents, children, extended families. And then the circle gets a little bit bigger, maybe with our co-workers. But the more time we spend with the people, the more important communicating with them becomes. Right? Because sometimes we see our neighbors and they lived to, uh, next to us for the past 20 years, but we only see them in the morning. So all the communication we have with them is what? Good morning and good morning. Like somebody said, said that to really ex uh, explain neighborhoods in America, he said is what? Garage doors open at 7 a.m., garage doors shut down at 6 p.m. So that is neighborhoods in America. I mean, isn't that really what we do? Garage doors come up, little cars leave, garage door comes down, then they come up and they come down, and that is the end of our association with our neighborhoods. That is really the end of it. Okay? So sometimes... The need to communicate with our coworkers is more important than the need to work with, to communicate with our neighbors, simply because even though our neighbors in proximity are closer to us, but time-wise, the people that we work with, we spend more time with them. At any case, so what we're looking at at this point is communicating with family members. There are three rules that are so important to practice when we are communicating with family members. Let's see. Rule number one. This rule is so important. If we just get this rule down, believe me, the rest is easy. Rule number one is the following. The person is always more important than the point. The person is always more important than the point. Because sometimes what do we want to do? I want to make the point even if it be at the expense of the person. But wait a minute, what good is the point if you made the point but you lost the person? So they say, just remember this, the person is always more important than the point. But some people say, but she was not getting it. He is so, he was not getting it. So how far are you going to go in order for him or her to get it? The point is so important to us that many times we are willing to sacrifice the person in order to make the point. 
Even though, wallahi, the teachings of the Prophet have always been what? Save the point to be made later on. But at this point, you need, you need to win the person. Win the person and save the point for later on. Allah, you know, I love this. You know, the hadith are so unbelievably beautiful. In the hadith, you know, the man who comes into salah. And, you know, sometimes people come into salah and sometimes we were taught salah and sometimes we were taught salah by, by way of just imitating people. The man comes into salah and he is praying and somebody sneezes in salah. So he steps up and goes, Yo, Allah. You know? He um, really didn't say that, but okay. So he says, Allah. So he said that, I'm doing this and people start looking funny at me. And this is all happening in salah, by the way. This is all happening in salah. I said, in salah, the man looks at the people and goes, What? 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 And remember, salah is going on. Well, like, salah is going on. Just like, What? What? What's wrong? Why is everybody looking at me like that? And this is all happening in Salah. Okay? And then Salah is over. And the man is telling the story and he said, فَالْتَفَتَ إِلَيَّ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ He said, the Prophet looked back and he said, فَوَاللَّهِ He said, by Allah, مَا رَأَيْتُ أَحْسَنَ مِنْهُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ He said, I have not seen a better teacher than him صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said, وَاللَّهِ مَا كَهَرَنِي He said, by Allah, he did not scold me. وَاللَّهِ مَا نَهَرَنِي He said, by Allah, he did not yell at me. You know, in the masjid, if a kid does something in salah, what would happen? Immediately. Said, yeah, if you bring your children to the masjid, make sure that they behave and make sure that... People, people really go crazy. Okay? Or sometimes, you know, sometimes we, we forget to turn off our cell phones. You know, well, it happens. People really do forget to turn off their cell phones. And the minute, you know, somebody's cell phone, like everybody's looking at him, it's like... And that guy is just saying that, why in the world did I come to Jum'ah today? You know, I could have just made more money, stayed at my job. Because we're not very forgiving. Because we so much want to stress the point at the expense of the person. Hey, Allah. Hey, well, and, and by the way, if, see, sometimes people would be sitting here and saying that, I wish my husband was here to listen to this. I wish my wife was here to listen to this. Because that is exactly my complaint. Remember, we benefit best when we want to apply these things. Not when we wait for somebody else to do it. And some of you here are a husband and a wife and saying, I hope he's listening to this now, you know. <laughs> well, I hope she's listening, because you know what? It can't get any clearer than this. Okay. But that is, not, that is not the point. Please remember, that always, always, the person is more important than the point. And that takes a lot of patience, by the way. Wallahi, when he said, Rabbi shrahli sadri, Allah, you know, because sometimes the, it will just drive you crazy. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would not practice that. You know the idea of that? Somebody can actually come to the masjid, and I'm sorry, defecate in the masjid, urinate in the masjid. And the people just really want to get up at the man and beat. And the Prophet said, leave the man alone, man. Just, just leave him alone, he said. You know? There is a point to be made. But now is not a good time, especially when you know that this is a kid. Especially when you know that he's not paying attention. Whatever it is. So the Prophet ﷺ goes, no, you know, these are the houses of Allah. And we don't do anything like that in the house of Allah. Because the man was just being, he wasn't, we couldn't, we couldn't even call him rude. He was just not civilized. Okay. So what does the man say? He was so moved by the way that the Prophet ﷺ spoke to him. And what does he say? He said, اللهم أدخلي ومحمد الجنة ولا تدخل معنا أحد أبدا. He said, Oh Allah, put me and Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم in paradise and all all these people who are sitting here. I want to see none of them in Jannah. Okay, I want to see none of you in Jannah. He said, because you all were very rude. You all were very. And what does the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم say? Oh, you listen now. You know you don't do. He just said. He said, يا أخي لقد حجرت واسعا. He said, oh, my brother, he said, you have indeed made very small that which is very vast. It can accommodate all of us. By the way, he wanted to correct, but at the same time, never at the expense of the person. Okay? But remember this, please. Always the person is more important than the point. Win the person now and make the point later on. We good with this one? Numero dos. Number two. 
say that similar to this point, but a little bit different. Where they say that being kind is more important than being right. Being kind is more important than being right. And usually we are not kind when we want to make the point at the expense of the person. So what we're asking is that many times being kind is more important than being right. On all the examples that I gave, by the way, you can either look at it as the person is more important than the point, or being kind to the person is more important than being right at that point. You know, I love that story of a man who came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the Prophet said, "Huh." Good luck with what? With this point? Some of you are already giving up, saying that, oh no, it's not happening. Okay? We'll see how we can implement them, inshallah. Um, so, this man comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as the Prophet sallallahu is distributing sadaqah amongst people. You know, people are coming in for charity. So, the Prophet sallallahu gives the man something. The man doesn't move and he just looks at the Prophet sallallahu And the Prophet sallallahu looked at him and he said, Ahsan tu ilayk? Have I done you good? Is this, is this good? And the man looks at the Prophet in the presence of the Sahaba and he said, Ya Muhammad, wallahi ma ahsanta wa la adalt. He said, Oh Muhammad, there is no Rasulullah, there is no Abu Qasim, none of that stuff. He just goes, Muhammad, you did not do me good and you are not a fair man. So everybody takes their belts out, well, not belts, their swords out. They take their sticks out and they're about to beat on the man. And the, now, the people are coming, and the Prophet is shielding the man. Leave the man alone. And the people want to come to him. And the Prophet, the one who was offended, he shields the man. He goes, just leave us alone. And he takes the man to his room. Listen, he takes the man to his room. And in there, he sits him down. And he goes and he gets some more stuff. And he said, Ahsan tu ilayk. Okay, fine, you have a nice phone. Can you please turn it off now? Okay, all right. So he brings some more stuff to the man, and he puts it in front of him, and he said, Ahsan tu ilayk? Are you happy now? Is this good? And he looks at him, and he said, Wallahi ma ahsanta wa la adalt. He said, by Allah, you have done me no good. By Allah, you have done me no favor. So the Prophet ﷺ gives him some more. He said, Ahsan tu ilayk? The man looks at it, and he said, Prophet of Allah, you're cool, man. You know, that, that's... That's really nice now. He said, we're good. So, the story does not end here. The Prophet looks at the man, he goes, Inna ashabi qad wajadu alayk. He said, you know, my companions out there are not very happy with you, man, because of what you said earlier. Can we go out there and I will ask you the question again? And you give the answer. So he takes him out. And in front of people, and he said, Ahsan tu ilayk. Have I done you good? And the man said, Wallahi ahsanta ilayya wa adalta ya Muhammad. He said, oh Muhammad, you've done me good and you are a fair man. And then the Prophet looked at, looks at the people and makes the following remark. And he said, Inna mathali wa mathalakum wa mathal hadha rajul ka mathali rajulin kanat indahu naqa. He said, the parable of you and me and this man is like a man who had a she camel. كَمَثَلِ رَجُلٍ كَانَتْ عِنْدَهُ نَاقَ A man who had a she-cam said, شَرَدَتْ مِنْهُ That started running away from him. He said, فَجَعَلَ النَّاسُ يَلْحَقُونَهَا So the people out of the goodness of their heart, they start chasing the camel, wanting to bring it back to the, to the, um, to the man. He said, فَجَعَلَ التَّجْرِ So the camel started running faster and further away. So the owner of the she said, people, stop, stop. He said, I know my she camel. He said, so he bent down and he picked something from khashash al-ard. He picked something from the earth and he said, فَجَعَلَ يَمْشِي إِلَيْهَا And he started walking towards the she camel. He said, the she camel stopped and started walking back towards him. يقول فلو أنه تركهم so that if this man were to leave them with what way they wanted to do he would have never seen his sheikh camel again it would just be gone he said ولو أني تركتكم وما أردتم 
said that, and if I were to let you do what you wanted to do initially to this man, we would have never seen him again. How many people came to the masjid before, and we never see them again, because somebody, because of the goodness of the heart, actually chased them out. They think that they were telling them something good, but they actually chased them out. By the way, a lot of our young people don't like to come to the masjid because of this. I like it when people come and say, no, Sheikh, I, bring, I have a hard time bringing my son or daughter to the masjid. I tell you right now, my children are not religious. But I really try to bring them to the masjid. The other day, my son came to the masjid, but he was wearing shorts. And my son has tattoos. So I brought him to the masjid anyways. So the minute we walked in, people were staring at him. And my son looked at me and he said, Dad, that's why I don't like to come to this place. Because people just start staring at me. Sheikh, I really struggled bringing my daughter to the masjid, but I know that she was not dressed properly. My daughter is not religious. You know, she's even considering whether she's a Muslim or not. So when she walked in, people were just staring at her with disgust. You know what? Why are you wearing something like this? So she never came back again. Why is that? Because in the process, we put so much emphasis on being right and not on being kind. So, the person is more important than the point. Being kind is more important than being right. And the third one is really, really important. Third one is this. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Why is that? Because many times, what we really want to say, we don't say. And what we really say, we don't mean. You following? Sometimes, what we say, we really don't mean. And what we mean, we really don't say. I like to give the example of this. Some of you are going to come after this and say, MashaAllah, that was a great lecture. But in your heart, you're thinking, man, that was just a total waste of time. But what you told me, is not what you really meant. And what you really meant, you really didn't tell me. Please listen to this. Our thoughts and our feelings are places where people can only come by an invitation. You following? As far as thoughts and feelings are concerned, people can only come in when they are invited. You can't just go there. I can't, unless you let me in. I cannot. But what happens is that many times, especially amongst married couples, we have got a hard time doing this. I love the story of the man who said, you know, him and his wife decided that they want to go out. What do you feel like? Arab food or Mexican? And the guy says, I don't care. And the wife asks him again, Arab or Mexican food? I don't care anything. What do you want? And the wife goes, okay, Mexican. They go, they have Mexican food eat Mexican food, he comes home and she tells me, he comes home and he starts preparing food. And she said, what happened? And he said, you know Mexican food does not fill me up. Well, why didn't you say something? I just said, you know, Arab food or Mexican food, and you chose that. He said, well, you know that doesn't... But he kept saying, anything is fine, but anything was not fine. Are you, are you all following? Anything was not fine, okay? By the way, I'm not sure if you agree or brothers know this. By the way, we don't know anything about you. So that you just to let you know, okay? When your wife comes and says, are you hungry? What does she mean? What, is, what does she mean when your wife comes and she says, are you hungry? When she said, are you hungry? What is she really saying? Let us eat. Let us eat. Okay? So now she goes, are you hungry? He goes, no, man, I am so full. I am, uh, alhamdulillah, I am just really, I am full, man. She gets disappointed. Okay? She gets disappointed. But, say, but, but why, why, why is that? Okay? Why? Because now, again, Remember, because of the way that sometimes 
people communicate, the cultural background that we come from, but whatever the case is, but the point remains, and that is what you're thinking, what you are feeling, I cannot know unless I am invited in. Are you getting, are you getting the point? So it makes it very difficult when what you say you don't mean and what you really mean you do not say. That makes communication not only difficult, it makes it impossible. It makes it impossible. Almost done. You know what? Actually, it's a good idea. Why don't we just finish right now? Yeah, salam. Okay. Yeah, let's just, let's just uh, stop here, um, inshallah. Part of, of where we really like to go with this, hopefully one day, inshallah, is to see how sometimes when we have got um, cultural barriers, we are unable to communicate with our children and sometimes with our spouses and what have you. Um, do you find that if you are married, been married, that how it is that sometimes we just argue about the same thing over and over again? You know, married couples, we just have that ability, subhanAllah, as if something is going to change, you know, just the same topic, same thing that she says, same things that he says, and just goes on and on and on. Do you know what's the problem with that? It has the ability of sucking the life out of the relationship. It can be extremely exhausting. So I love it when people come to me, I mean, love it meaning that it makes me laugh when people say, man, we almost got divorced last night. So what happened? We had this big, huge argument. I was just so sick and tired of it. I almost got divorced. I say, what was the argument about? I say, I don't remember. <laughs> Wait a minute. You almost got divorced over an, over an argument that you do not remember. That is scary, people. Wallahi, that is scary. Say that I was just really, and it goes on and on, and that is not, and that is not healthy. Remember this. And this is, you know what? When we start practicing this, wallahi. Now, how the other people react, that we cannot control. But at least I know that I can control what I need to do. So please let us just amongst ourselves practice this. The person is always more important than the point. Being kind is always more important than being right. Say what you mean and mean what you say, but use the best of ways to express, um, to express that. And that is why being a Muslim is important. At a human level, it may be difficult, but when we say that, as Muslims, because these are divine guidance, then we can say, I want to be like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even if the other person chooses not to. Because I am responsible for my actions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to become better communicators, ya Rabbul Alameen. Yalla jazakumullah khair, hada wallahu alam, wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad.